You are welcome to today's broadcast. Sure Destiny TV, reaching people and touching lives. Hello, hello fellow Nigerians. This is your brother, Dr. Haruna. I want to welcome you to today's broadcast. We started this broadcast a few months back, dealing with the issues that affect our dear, precious nation of Nigeria. Today we have somebody who is a highly placed person, a Nigerian who is operating abroad. But when I heard that he was coming to Nigeria, I decided under a very short notice to invite him to come and join me in the studio. But before I speak to him, interview him, and just find out a few things on his take regarding the issue of the situation of our nation, Nigeria, I want to encourage everybody out there, please go ahead and like this broadcast, like the page, and also subscribe so that when next we have another broadcast, you'll be the first to be notified. And I want you to also like the broadcast. So I have here with me, Mr. Uzo Okafo. He is the former Surveyor General of Namibia, also a former president and current patron of the Association of Nigerians that are living in Namibia. He's also the current patron of Ohanes in Namibia. And we are so happy to have him today in the studio. So Mr. Uzo Okafo is here with me. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Okafo, you. Uh, for coming. Briefly, please, Tell us who is Mr. Okafo. My name is Uzo Shuku Okafo, a Nigerian educated in Nigeria. I started as a lecturer at the University of Nigeria in campus, where I lectured for about six years and then left for University of Zimbabwe. I was there for about three years and then relocated to Namibia, where I rose to the rank of Soviet General of Namibia. I retired five years ago and presently I do consultancy in the areas of public management, policy analysis, performance management, and then I also consult for the AU border program. So that's how I keep myself busy after retirement. Mr. Okafo, now you're kind of making me become emotional here. You're telling me we have this kind of caliber of Nigerians. At retirement, one would prefer to relocate to the home country. Mm. At least we can. If we don't do anything, we should be available on adversarial level. But unfortunately, some of us are in exile, although not forcefully, but uh, the condition has made us to remain where we are. So our desire is to have a better Nigeria. We are not only us as those who have benefited from Nigeria, but our children who are trained abroad to begin to look back to our home country to contribute their own quota. This season is the season where they say the polit politicking season, where everything is, every, almost every discussion in supermarkets, in the mosques, in the churches. Knowing that you are, you are from the South and then you are Igbo speaking and you know, I had an idea that Southerners don't want to do anything with us. In this season where people are doing politics around religion, around tribalism, sectionalism, and, and you seem to be an open-minded person. Now, I don't want to go ahead of myself, However, I want to know, do you have any political inclination or affiliation? Presently, I'm a card carry member of the People's Democratic Party. That's the PDP. That's the PDP. Mm. But I, I also know that in the season where we are, for Nigeria, of our dream, at a point in time, you may also begin to think Nigeria and not a party. Mm. And that is the stage where I am now. As I said, I have benefited from Nigeria. The education I have, although I had education also in South Africa, University of Stellenbosch, but the basic education, the ground education that made me, that made me become a Soviet general was in Nigeria. So I owe Nigeria and the way to pay back is to think beyond myself, think beyond my party, think beyond my ethnic group and look at where Nigeria could have been. As somebody who hails from Kaduna State. The situation in the nation, the challenge of insecurity, the challenge of the economy and the state of the economy, you know how education has been, you know, with the ASU strike and even now it's been politicized. A nation that should have been producing a lot of food even to feed the rest of Africa, but we have to import food, see where are the situation with our refineries. And so, and all the other ills that we see, I mean, a nation like Nigeria not having electricity, we produce petrol, fuel, but we have to import. Looking at the current situation in Nigeria, do you see the possibility of change in Nigeria? Yes, 
a new Nigeria, I believe from the bottom of my heart, it is possible. But for that to be possible, we need to change the way we think. We need to relieve ourselves of party, ethnic, religious, and any other parochial restriction. We say that the future belongs to the youth. A time has come for us to listen to those we say the future belongs to. And what are they saying today? Presently, we find preponderance of them in a movement called Obedient Movement. A obedient movement for a better Nigeria. I'm not supporting him because he's a Christian, no. I'm not supporting him because he's from the South, no. I'm supporting him because he can deliver, he can do the job. And we are tired of what has been going on. So we want Nigeria, we want a better Nigeria for our children, our grandchildren. Our leaders have failed us. This is a land that is supposed to be flowing with oil and milk, and is now flowing with tears and blood. This movement has nothing to do with any party. I am very convinced that if Nigerian constitution had allowed somebody to emerge outside a party, we wouldn't be talking of a party. We would only be talking of this movement and the person that we believe that can give us the new Nigeria we are talking about. So I believe a new Nigeria is possible. Nigeria can begin to realize that potential which we had in 1960 and which has remained a mirage. But I'm an opt optimist. Mm. It can happen. And 2023 is a potential date for that to happen. If we all play our part and use our PVC rationally for the betterment of our dear country, Nigeria. I'm hearing you already talking about the obedient movement, which is what you hear on the street, supermarkets, everywhere you turn. Obedient, obedient. So are you telling me, even though you're a card-carrying member of PDP, are you then telling me you are Labour Party? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm not Labour Party. I remain a committed member of PDP. But as I mentioned, there's a point in your life when you begin to think beyond yourself and once you begin to think beyond yourself it means you begin to think beyond your ethnic group beyond your party and belong with any parochial organization that you may belong to today we need a new nigeria and for us to have a new nigeria i repeat we must listen to the youth because the new nigeria belongs to them some of us i don't know how, how long we still be here I was in school, university, when 50 koba, I can eat whatever I like for three square meals. Good meals, very good meals. Today, what do we have? Asu is on strike for seven good months, and the Minister of Education is being given a national honor. Can we continue that way? So I am saying, yes, I belong to PDP, and I'm still committed to them. So just to give you one, I can take Nigeria, can take our state, can take our senatorial district, can take our local. constituency, mm -hmm. local government forward. Mm. And that is what I intend to do going forward. It seems as if all the youth and the people that are saying obedient, useful, they are behind Peter or B. Just because the young people, the future belongs to them and they are all uh, obedient. If I come to my state and my senatorial zone, my senatorial zone is represented by a PDB candidate and that candidate has done well. I will still support that candidate. So I think we have come to a point, and this obedient movement has told us that because majority of the obedient movement members are not card carrying members. Mm. So they have now told us, they have now shown us that we must look beyond our party, look at the person that is presented by each of every party and decide on who we think can take Nigeria, can take our state, can take our senatorial district, can take our local. constituency, mm -hmm. local government forward. Mm. And that is what I intend to do going forward. It seems as if all the youth and the people that are saying obedient, useful, they are behind Peter or B. Just because the young people, the future belongs to them and they are all uh, obedient. And then you are saying we should, you, that's why you're crossing party lines to follow the movement. 
to bring a person like Obi. What are the things you see in Peter Obi? Uh, could, could it be that it maybe is the tribal sentiment, sectional sentiment, and you hail from Anambra? Uh, couldn't it be hidden behind you that uh, let me uh, for this time let me cross party lines and vote my own countrymen or the, somebody from my area? So uh, sorry, I may be wrong, but we need to hear because some people may be asking that maybe it's still the hidden sentiment. Yes, that is a pertinent question. You will realize that when I was introducing myself, I said that I'm a proud Nigerian from Anambra State, in that order, and deliberately so, because I consider my success a product of the Nigerian state. Mm. Now, for me to begin to support the obedient movement, and by extension, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, I considered basically two different sets of things. Okay. One is his governance of my state, Anambra State. The other one is his vision, which I'm listening to. Starting from his vision, I'll come back to my state, how he governed my state. I was so much persuaded when he said that the large vast of land that Nigeria has in northern part of Nigeria, Nigeria will become the second oil for Nigeria. As soon as I heard that, I remember Netherlands. Mm. Netherlands is a very small country, very small, it's maybe less than one of the states in Nigeria. But what it gains, what it exports, what it gains from foreign exchange, from agriculture, is enormous. And I visualize what could happen if he does that in the northern part of Nigeria. Because one thing I could also do is to bring prosperity to that part of the country. Mm. And if prosperity comes to that part of the country, Boko Haram banditry will become a thing of the past. Two, he had talked about education. Mm. And I look at myself, without education, mm. I wouldn't have you achieved mm. what I have today. And so, and coming back, relating that to my state, the issue of security. When Peter B became the governor of Anambra State, mm. security in Anambra State was in a very precarious state. In a space of two years, Anambra State become very peaceful and people can come there and invest and live. And you know, Anambra State, we like to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And we go home every Christmas to do that. <laughs> and we're able to do that throughout the period. And coming back to education, you know that Anambra people are being made fun of as these are traders. Mm. We, are, we don't go to school any longer, we are just traders. But when Obi came, mm. he reversed that. He made them understand that Anambra are not only business people, that they also go to school. And not only that they go to school, that they do well. For three consecutive years, Anambra State remained top as far as WASC examination is concerned. So I have no doubt in my mind that if this person with a legacy of performance and a vision that persuades me that that is the type of a new Nigeria that I want, mm. that at that point in time, I must ask myself, must I restrict myself to a party or look forward where I want Nigeria to be? And because I believe in a new Nigeria is possible and I see him as somebody with that potential, I cannot best decide to be obedient. Yeah. Next year, the time is over. I'll take it that uh, uh, next year, the election you're going to have next year will not be about. Remember, it is not about tribe, no religion, not connection, not entitlement. It must be election about character, competence, capacity, and commitment to deliver. When we were speaking off camera, uh, you said something and I want to just bring it, it just came to my mind now. I was surprised to hear you say that initially when the whole obedient movement started, that people from Mr. Obi State and the Igbos were not full, they were not enthusiastic, they were not excited about it. It's as if they are latecomers into the movement. Can you bring some light? Igbos not be the f in the forefront of the movement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a very good question, especially when the Igbos were people clamoring for an Igbo president. Yeah. But one thing I will uh, say about my people, mm. especially from Anambra State, we don't jump so, easy. so <laughs> easily. 
yeah. in, in respect of where the person comes from. So we needed to look at what, yes, we know what he did, but we need to first hear what his vision is. We also had to listen to other Nigerians because we know only Igbo people cannot make an Igbo man a president because we are not, the person is not running for an Igbo president, only for a Nigerian president. Mm. So we needed to make sure that one, that his vision aligns with our vision of a better Nigeria because you know Igbo people will compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we want is a nation where the level playing ground is there for anyone to compete and we saw that. We also saw that he has support from Northern, Southern Nigeria and most importantly that the one very important segment of Nigerian society, the youth, mm. are in support. So all this aggregated to now make it imperative that in addition to having what we've been clamoring for, this person has the support of other Nigerians. So we have to create. Wow. We have to become obedient. Wow, wow, wow. Now, yeah, let, let me just touch on something. Even though I understand what you're saying, Mr. Uzo, uh, as the current serving president of Ohaneze, Petron. Uh, the patron, yes, uh, serving patron, yes, uh, of Ohaneze in Namibia, and I believe you also have connections with uh, the ones back home. Uh, looking at that and going forward, do you see, see well, how do you see? Is this just something you feel may just be after or be then what next? Because there have been agitation for the Biafran state and some are still pushing and they are scared thinking that when Obi comes he's going to create a Biafran state you know so some people may be out there asking and saying they're just hiding this thing from us because I have been asked they're asking me Dr. Haruna why are you being used by these southerners then one day they will just come and create a Biafran state take over the nation then we are left hanging in the air so are you so sure that it's not a, a secret plan for a Biafran state and you are talking Nigeria Nigeria but some are saying they don't want Nigeria they say there's no Nigeria they want Biafra we are I'm campaigning not to be an Igbo president I'm campaigning to be Nigerian president so this is not an Igbo president just like I told people don't vote for me because I'm an Igbo man don't vote for me because I'm a Christian vote for me because I'm the most qualified, competent. Yes. You see, the clamor for Biafra is a product of both perceived and real marginalization. When you have a people as vibrant as Ndibo and the youth feeling marginalized, I think these things are real. But one thing I want to tell you is that in our Republican nature, every, I would say, most Ndibo believe that belonging to that state called Nigeria is to the interest of Ndibo. What we are asking for, that's why you find that our elite supports restructuring. Mm. Because we believe that that gives an opportunity for each group to develop at their own pace. Mm. We know what we achieved when the true federalism was operational immediately after independence. So, I can also tell you that Obi Obi is a capitalist with mm. investment outside Igbo land. Mm. Will you want to destroy what he has built? No. <laughs> it's true. We come to um, Abuja. We yeah. come to Lagos. We come to your state. Yeah. We have Igbos investing what they have not done in Igbo land. Huh. Who are, they will only destroy that. No. So I think it's the scaremongering by those who do not want Nigeria to move forward. Mm. When you want, those who want Nigeria to move forward will not propagate that type of scaremongering. You know what Nigeria has done to itself? You know, when you keep somebody on the ground, you cannot get up unless you release that person you are keeping on the it's ground. It's true. You it also is, will be. It is time for Nigeria to leave Igbos and make them to get up. Once the Igbos get up, Nigeria will get up. Hmm. And we will all benefit from it. And I told you what Obi is saying. Mm. Peter is saying that, as far as he's concerned, the second oil, which even the better oil for Nigeria, can be found in the, in the agricultural land of the north. 
any has any of those other candidates say something like that? No. It's only an Igbo man saying it. Mm. And I can tell you, when an Igbo man becomes the president, the Afsa man, the Fulani man, the Yoruba man, we have nothing to fear. Because as I said, an Igbo man is not afraid to compete. Mm. So what you will have is a Nigeria where hard work pays. Mm. So the issue of Biaf <laughs> is a product of marginalization. And that will be dead hmm. as soon as Nigeria becomes what we want it to be. This to me has laid to rest my fear as a hardcore northerner. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, to hear it from a professional and elderly statement like you, to me, all my fears are gone. Thank you very much. Thank you for being very open and sincere. Mr. Okafo, we'll be taking a short break, and when we return, I'll still be talking with Mr. Okafo as we work towards the conclusion of this broadcast. We've been talking with uh, Mr. Uzo Okafo uh, before the break, and I want to say thank you very much. You've talked about the elections, you've talked about your preferred candidate, not, but not on the basis of, uh, of party affiliation, but the person of OB. And, uh, and you've heard about his running mate, uh, Ahmed Yusuf. Do you know anything about him? Because sometimes the person that is the running mate also decides where the future is going. You know, so what, just briefly, what do you have to say about his running mate? His choice of running mate is also one of the things that persuaded me to be obedient. Mm. I look at this young man, look at the university he set up, look at, I was looking at the faculty of medicine and I see the way that faculty was set up, the equipment, and I compare what I have over here. And I started researching about what, who is this guy. And I saw that, you know, just like people from the north have wrong perception about people from the south, those of us from the south also have very <laughs> uh, wrong perception of people from the north. the north. So when I researched about this young man, in fact, I'm even convinced also that he's as good as Peter Obi. Huh. And I told myself, look, Peter Obi does not need to do everything. This man, you can leave the tough decisions for him to take also. Because to be able, when I, I, I started to hear him speak, and I'm convinced that that combination is a combination for the birth of a new Nigeria. Well, even as we conclude this uh, broadcast of today, just a few things I want to find out uh, from you. Uh, your children, uh, do they live abroad with you? And if they do, is there any plan of either you as an entire family returning back to Nigeria? Are they desiring to come to Nigeria? What are the plans? Yes, one very heavy price that most of us who left Nigeria to live abroad is paying is the danger of losing our children to a foreign nation. I personally, when we think about it, and we see the Nigeria we had in Nigeria today, we believe that if we're able to get a new Nigeria, it will not be difficult for us to persuade our children to begin to look back. We talked about power. We talked about security. These are the things what helped. These are the things we take for granted where I live and which my children have come to take for granted. But it is my desire, a very humble and deep desire, that my children should be able to also contribute to the development of that country. I have three kids. Two of them are in the corporate world financially, financial corporate world. My daughter is a lawyer with specialization in corporate governance. My desire for them is to contribute to the development of that country. And that is one thing why I also say to myself, look beyond yourself, look beyond your party, look beyond your ethnic group, look beyond your religion, do whatever is good for a new Nigeria, because that will also be good for me. And I decided to be obedient. You've just heard Mr. Okafo pour his heart out. We need to hear your views. What are you saying? You know, do you see the birth of a new Nigeria as being possible? Yes, we know, we've looked forward to seeing the, this path for very long. And each time, we thought it was going to be through this political party, that political party, and our hopes kept being dashed. And especially those of you living abroad. It got to a moment when, uh, where you're just working as if all you're just working for people living back here at home. To, they're asking for money, send us for these school fees, send us money to pay rent to do this. 
and then you're just becoming so worn out. Even though you're living abroad, I believe you can make a difference. It could be in just calling people back home and boost their morale, encourage them, tell them it's possible. Just as Mr. Uzo has told us, he's living abroad. He could have just forgotten about Nigeria and say he's doomed. But what is he saying? He's telling us it's possible to birth a new Nigeria. You also can contribute for those of you that are able to send money. Send money to your people back home and let it be designated towards the movement. And then you can also support the Labour Party. The challenging thing is that you can't just be obedient and go and look for an obedient party. There's no obedient party. OB is standing on the platform of the Labour Party. Many of the young people are not card-carrying members, but because to be able to vote, there needs to be a political party. And that's why the party that he's standing on is Labour Party. So whichever way you can support the movement, support the party to make it possible, that will really be something I will advise you to do. It's your own personal choice, but feel free to do that. But just as Mr. Okafo said, you have your choices to make when it comes to House of Assembly, the Senate, it has to do with uh, your local government, gubernatorial candidate. You, that doesn't change. But even in your choices in those different areas or different platforms, make sure you are voting people of integrity, people that have the interest of Nigeria and not just their own selfish interest. Any last words you want to address your fellow Nigerian citizens? Just face the camera and just say what you, you have on your heart as you cl we close. Yes, fellow compatriots, one thing we need to do is to give each candidate, each party, an opportunity to sell themselves, devoid of violence and unlawful restriction. I want to say there's no reason why APC and Tunubu cannot campaign without molestation in the Southeast. There will be no reason why the PDP cannot campaign without restriction or molestation, whether in the Southeast, Southwest, or the North. The same for Labour Party. There should be no reason why they cannot campaign any other place without restriction. We need to listen to each and every one of the candidates to be able to take a decision if you have not made up your mind. We need a Nigeria that is better than what we have today. And to do that, each, there's no sitting on the fence. Each and every one of us. And I want to particularly ask those of my generation. We enjoyed Nigeria when it was good. We owe the youth, we owe those upcoming generations to do what is right, irrespective of party, ethnic, religious, or any other parochial organization. And may God bless you as you take the right decision to move Nigeria forward and get a better Nigeria and take back our country from all those that have driven us to where we do not want to be. Thank you. Wow, Mr. Okafo, thank you, thank you very much for pouring your heart out. I look forward to having you again on this broadcast or maybe on Zoom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Goro. Thank you. Wow, wow. I just want to say thank you to those of you that have watched, everyone that has watched this broadcast. I want to say thank you very much. Feel free to share it on all the different platforms that you have. Download it, compress it, and let it go viral. Every Nigerian needs to hear what Mr. Okafo has shared with us today. He really poured his heart out. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I want you to subscribe to my channel and also like because by so doing, YouTube is going to suggest it to people, to many more people so that they can watch it. And I also want you to press the notification bell, that is the icon, so that anytime I have another new broadcast, you will be notified. So once again, thank you for being part of today's broadcast and we look forward to having you next time. May God bless you and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Bye-bye.